Hi, I'm Blue Del Barrio, and I'm partnering with Move On to kick off their Joy and Resistance series during Pride. I am joined by my very good friend and Star Trek Discovery co-star, Ian Alexander. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Joy and Resistance. Why Joy? Why now? Um, I think it's pretty straightforward in that it's a really scary and kind of horrifying moment right now for queer people um it's necessary for us to find joy wherever we can with each other in the communities that we create not just during pride not just because it's pride month but 24 7 right now because all of us need kind of an insane amount of support at this moment to sort of be able to live our lives the same way that everybody else is is doing um so yeah it's it's really hard to create joy right now under these circumstances but it's really important that we get it and give it to each other and receive it i absolutely agree this is actually uh this is reminding me of the red carpet look that you did where you painted trans <laughs> on the back of your like was it like blazer or like trench coat or something it, it looked really <laughs> cool and i remember seeing that and i was like Yes, blue, trans joy. So you're so right. You should say it. Um, because we all deserve more joy and more light and levity in our lives. Like it's just this constant onslaught of like bad news. The world is burning. Things are terrible. Being a trans person is hard. Um and so I've been, you know, spending a lot of time with my chosen family and my community of like other trans people just holding each other and taking care of each other and really just babying each other because we, we deserve <laughs> it. We deserve it and we need it. That's right. Yeah. A lot of us did not get that or get that to a sufficient level. And so it's when we say chosen family, like it, it is really a lot of us are having to like go back to the start and redo a lot of what our childhood should have been. So yeah. it it's it's so important. Um yeah, re reparenting yourself is some of the hardest work that I have ever done in yeah. my therapy journey. And um, having a, a queer therapist of color has been like just so instrumental in my healing journey. I've been in therapy since I was like 14, but in 2020, I started seeing like a queer therapist who is also a woman of color. And um, even though we're not like of the same exact demographic, like she's not trans and she's not Vietnamese, we have enough in common that when she speaks from her personal experience, it's like, oh, okay, this person is like an elder queer who has been around for more than twice as long as I have. And she keeps it real with me and, you know, tells me the reality. Like my most recent therapy session, I was just like venting about frustrating things happening. And I was just like, when will it end? It won't. And she was just like, it won't, but it will get easier because you will get smarter and you will grow thicker skin. And it, you'll eventually get to a place where things will happen and it won't bother you as much as it used to. Yeah. And she's like, I'm not trying to be depressing. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate <laughs> that she kept it real with me because she's just like, you know, she's like, I'm, I'm a, like, I'm just going to keep it real with you. Like, you know, I'm not going to get better the world will always continue to be hard for us as long as we continue to exist which you know we're not going anywhere um i just i, I love my therapist so much <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good it's a it, it's really important and it's the thing that you mentioned like before we started but about like about healthcare like for trans people and about how I'm literally trying to do the same I'm trying to find a therapist I have been for like two years who I can feel the same way that you feel with your therapist and it's really hard it's much harder than I also was in therapy from like a young age on but didn't start my transition until later until I was a little bit older so and I'm just comparing like how how wide of a choice I had when I was, you know, like femme presenting and not yet come out versus now when I really need somebody who understands 
um and it's it's not a want it's not a desire i've like found out through trial and error it's a need um and that's really hard in terms of healthcare. Yeah. it's insanely hard um it takes so much time and so much effort and oftentimes a lot of money in trial and error in like meeting people and seeing if the, you know that is actually the support that you need mm -hmm. um and same goes with doctors because oh my gosh yeah every <laughs> Well, I have like some chronic illness stuff, but every time I do see a new doctor and they've asked if I'd had surgery before, nine out of 10 times when I say I've had top surgery, they don't know what that is. But it, it is a very bizarre thing to have to scarily explain like who and what you are to a complete stranger even though they're a medical professional because you don't know what the response is going to be yeah i'm so grateful that all of my like medical and mental health professionals now are either trans informed or they are trans themselves or or queer existing in the world is hard as like a multiple minority person like not only do i have to deal with racial microaggressions of being asian american but i also have to deal with like misogyny of being perceived as a woman sometimes and transphobia and homophobia like just the the multiple layers of discrimination <laughs> and finding health care where you know i don't have to explain myself and they're informed of the different ways in which like my gender dysphoria and you know ptsd from just existing in this world like affect my physical and mental health it's just, it's so life-changing and everyone deserves that. Um, yeah, like my my doctors are trans-informed because uh, I see them through like a trans youth health clinic that I've been seeing since I turned 18. Um, and I don't know what I would do if I were just seeing a regular doctor that was like, I don't know what a trans person is. Um, I mean, I have, I have had that experience before where they're just like, I have never seen a trans patient before. You're my first. And I'm like, oh love to be pioneering diversity and representation <laughs> in every aspect of my life on screen and off screen baby the one thing i wish i could say and like want to start saying more publicly is like if you don't if you are like in the medical field and you have a trans client come to you and they're asking questions that are related to their transition in terms of hormones or in terms of surgery if you don't know what an what's the correct answer, find someone who does know and send them there because I haven't had anyone do that. I've mainly had people try and give me the correct answer, mm. you know, to the best of their ability when I have found afterwards a lot of the time that wasn't the correct answer or that wasn't a helpful answer or they themselves didn't know exactly what to do. Um, or exactly what the outcome was going to be. It's, I feel like it's so obviously at this moment in time, not a lot of people in the wider medical field were taught about trans people um, in their training. I think it's like if you don't know and someone comes to you, absolutely find another doctor who does know and send that person in that direction, I think. That's just for the time being what's going to need to happen right now because um, you can't fully educate yourself on, you know, gender affirming surgeries and hormone therapy <laughs> like in a day uh, to help someone in that way. But we do need the help. So that's yeah, that's just one weird thing that I find that's happened. And I know it comes from a good place of wanting to be able to help. Um, but, you know, if you don't know, you refer to somebody who does. Yeah, I mean, as far as, like, representing our community, it is, you know, a huge honor and responsibility to represent the trans community on Star Trek. And, you know, we've, both of us have seen the reactions in person when, you know, I'm at a convention and people of all ages, you know, like, five to like 75 are coming up and you know looking me in the looking me in the eyes and saying like 
you have helped me so much like because you were on screen like I feel more confident being myself I talk to my family about my gender identity like you know just all of these like super sweet affirming things of like this is why I do the work that I do this is why you know I want to represent our community because there's been you know a lack of like trans masculine representation um and you know things have things have improved so much within the last five years even like it used to be you know the the only out and proud trans people that were playing trans characters on tv were like Laverne Cox Elliot Fletcher and me (laughs) (laughs) And, 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 you know, and now, and now we have like, you, we have you blue, we have (laughs) Beth, we got, we got so many people, you know, we have, we have Elliot Page now, um, you know, we have Leo Shang, Chella Man, like there's just, there's so much, there are hundreds and hundreds of trans actors now. And I'm really grateful for the community that we've built with each other because most of us are friends with each other. Because it's hard. It is it, it is hard being so visible in a world that does not want us to be visible. The community that we've found within other trans mask actors has been like I can't explain how helpful and how meaningful because it's there's still there's there's more of us. There's still not a lot of us. And film and television is still in a place where it's like very split people's reasonings for writing in a trans character. It, you know, there can obviously be the stories where it's very well intentioned that uh, it's there for a reason, it's informed, and the character is like a fully fledged human being. Um, and then there's the other side of that where we have shows that are like, I think that we need to put a trans character in here. Uh, so that we can say that we've done that and, you know, have that have that viewing, you know, from that group of people. And it's pretty clear <laughs> when, when it's one or the other. Um, and because there's still such a, like a, kind of a small group of us who are like currently working, it's a really bizarre thing to know these people and call a lot of them friends because because there's still so few jobs for us, we're oftentimes all auditioning for exactly the same thing. Um, which is so funny because we're all so different. So different. Like, like <laughs> the, the fact that like India Moore and I are going out for the same roles. And I'm like, we're so different from each other. It's um, really good. <laughs> it's wild that like the sometimes they're really just like let's just get any non-binary person in this room <laughs> yeah yeah because oftentimes they at least i've found people they might not really know what they're looking for mm-hmm. which is also completely fine and it's also why i'm really taking the time and pushing every opportunity that i can to I've just been trying to ask for like everything to be sent over to me. And if there is a project or a character that seems like gender is not important, which is, by the way, most of them, <laughs> like it's very rare to have a story where like the character's gender is a real, like, you know, at the forefront. If it is, that's usually what the entire story is like centering. And then obviously, you know, gender is important in that casting, but usually it's not. So I'll push for it. And try to get a message across to the writers or the casting directors and ask, like, is this open? Is this, like, could you, you know, see casting a trans person in this role? Would that make any difference in how you've written it? Would that benefit the story? Probably. Um, Would it give, would it allow for representation? Yes. So, yeah, I don't know. In the same vein, I feel like I'm so... I've been out for five, four or five years, something like that, but have been acting since I was little. And it's so sad because this was, this is the art form that like gave me purpose and gave me a safe place um, and has brought me to this point in my life. 
but the insanely drastic shift from how much I felt was available to me before coming out versus after is so depressing and like should not be the case whatsoever and the fact that everything now is about the fact that like we're trans and not about you know a lot of times our work and you know the work we're putting into it and our talent and everything else I don't know yeah I I mean I don't know what that experience is like to like you know be acting as you know a them presenting person and then to like ch- you know change that into like now I'm out as trans because my yeah. career has been s- since I came out um I mean I I would love for there to be more genderless casting and more you know just like breaking down this binary of like we have to only see this specific type of person for this audition like just yeah. keeping, you know, like the race of a character open, unless it's like super crucial to that character's like, you know, development um, or like, you know, their storyline is based around their race. Like that makes sense. But, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, what? well, why not have an Asian person play this role or why not have a trans person play this role? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I'm hoping that as, you know, things progress and as, you know, I'm able to get into producing roles more often, like, I can help make some of these changes happen in the industry. And I know that a lot of, a lot of other trans people and our allies are on the same page about that. We're just like, yeah, like, we should be able to go out for you know a superhero role or you know a random alien on lower decks you know it's like the character doesn't even need to be trans he can just be like a little slime ball or something like it doesn't have to always be about you know the journey that we're going through with our gender um those stories are very important and deserve to be told but i would love to play like a villain or something you know like I just want yeah. variety want to I want to be able to show the world that I am like a very three-dimensional human being um and I have been able to do that in my work um and I'm very grateful for you know in the OA like it is referenced that, that my character is trans but it's not like the point of his yeah. existence on the show um you know in Star Trek like Gray mentions that he's transitioned and that he's changed his name and you know he's medically transitioned but it is not the sole plot point like it's more about his relationship with Adira and also him trying to like become a, a, an alive corporeal human being again or not human being trilling <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it like and I'm very happy that we for Adira kept that I guess, yeah, coming out scene, really short and sweet and simple. And we never had to go back to it. Yeah. It was very straightforward. I, I'm i really happy with with how that turned out and the direction that we went in with it. Because I think that's really all it needed. Um, yeah. I, I really appreciate, like, Stamets and Culper is just instant like yes like new pronouns got it because like that experience is really rare for trans people but that far ahead in the future it won't be that rare um so you know it gives me hope that like this is the future that we want for ourselves where you can come out and you can change your pronouns and it's not going to be this huge fight it's not going to cause you know trauma it's just like oh they use they them now okay cool and then you carry on with your day because you got bigger fish to fry. You're like, you're on a spaceship doing space related things. <laughs> Who cares about pronouns? There's reprogrammable matter. Like, <laughs> you can literally create whatever you want. So, of course, you can change your gender. Um, <laughs> I, I, I love how casual it is. It is, it is crazy, though. Like, it, even just now, I. Not even, not even in space, not even in the future. I don't, I, I tend to deal with a lot of like 
strife and bad emotions with humor, which is not always great. But that's <laughs> like it. It's it's so simple in my head. I also like I know that I'm trans and we're trans, but also if you put it on paper, it is just the simplest thing. If you tell a kid every time I've seen a video or had an actual in-person experience with, you know, a younger person who's been like, oh, are you a boy or a girl? And myself or their parent will be like, well, they're both or they're neither. The response you get is like, OK. <laughs> Yeah, they're just like, oh, for sure. And we'll go back to playing with their toys. And it's like, Great. Sick. Cool. No one, it's not a big deal. It does not deserve all of this attention, all of this hatred, like all of this vitriol. It's wild for just the simplest thing. Yeah. I want to. <laughs> <hate. laughs> all this hatred comes from this fear of the unknown. Right. You know, it's the I don't understand this thing. This is different. I'm scared. So I'm going to lash out and react with anger. Um, and so that's why, you know, we see such violence in response to, you know, trans people just existing. Like, I'm not even really doing anything controversial. Like, I just woke <laughs> up and I ate some oatmeal. Like, I'm just existing. Uh, and, and, you know, and that makes some people really angry because they just, they are so afraid of living their true authentic selves that it angers them to see other people doing that. Um, and a big part of it is, you know, their mental health is probably not great. Um, I mean, I, I, I really do think that all violence in the world comes from a place of like deep, deep internal hurt. Yeah. Um, which is why, you know, accessible mental health care is so important for, for everyone, not just people in the trans community. Like, we all are going through this world that is on fire, and we need to talk to professionals about it who can, you know, help give us advice and, like, coping strategies to deal with the fact the world is literally on fire. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, and we're both, like, really, if I can speak for both of us, in a really, like, lucky position to be able to have that kind of healthcare in our lives right now, and it's crazy and really disappointing how difficult it is to even be able to get in just for one session with a therapist for anybody. Um, it just makes it a lot harder. It's already hard to start that process and make the decision to start that process on your own we need to find a way to make it easier for people to then take that step because taking that step that next step is probably why a lot of people give up it's so financially difficult it's so difficult to fit in with a lot of people's schedules and times and work and it's you know without insurance it's like it's close to impossible so it it's it's takes a whole nother level of effort to actually get into that appointment which you know for a lot of people is just not realistic it's not manageable so it i don't we've built it in a way that is really not great um for most <laughs> um yeah i mean so so much of it it's just the way that capitalism works and doesn't allow time for self-care or leisure unless you work less and some people can't afford that some people can't take a couple hours off to go to healthcare appointments you know because then they'll get fired from their job and then they will lose everything um and so i mean i i just I don't I don't necessarily know if there is one size fits all solution to this, but I think we can start with just meeting people's basic needs in society so that they don't have to decide between having great mental health care or having a home and food and, you know, keeping the lights on. Yeah. Which seems like such a simple concept, but apparently it's not. <laughs> Thank you for checking out Joy and Resistance. <laughs> <laughs>
If you want to get involved and be informed of our latest updates, text JOY to 668366 and follow MoveOn.